Okay, hello everyone. This is Gary DeTonacourt from wildernessnapshot.com. And tonight I'm here with uh, master landscape photographer, Marion Farrier. And tonight we're here to talk all about landscape photography and photography in general. If you're in the chat room and you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in at any time. And if you can, let us know what your name is so we know who we're talking to. And uh, the general idea of tonight is that we're, we're going to talk to Marion about landscape photography and she's going to maybe show us some of her images. And then some people have submitted images for critique. And so we'll be taking a look at those images and, uh, and critiquing those. And so hopefully we'll have a, a fun and educational night all about uh, landscape photography. And so I guess we'll get started by welcoming Marion. Hi, Marion. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, wanted to have, have uh, you tell us a little bit about yourself. What, what kind of got you into photography and what made you kind of, you know, specialize in landscape photography? Well, uh, let's see. In high school, I was in the photography club and I used an SLR then. And I liked it. And then I stopped shooting for years. And then I wanted to be a painter for a while. So I painted a lot. But in college, I didn't major in any of those things. I majored in biology. So, um, oh, wow. Totally so did unrelated. I. <laughs> yeah. So totally unrelated. So then I'm like, what do I want to do with my life? So then I stayed in kind of a medical laboratory type field. But then I always loved to paint and, and photograph off and on. And then suddenly, when digital cameras came out, and that's going to be almost 15 years ago, I, I got very interested in them because I liked the editing end of it. I liked to do artistic stuff, so I liked editing. And then I didn't know what direction to go in like many beginning photographers, so I did try the lit landscape, I tried macro, I tried portraits, I hated everything, and all the stuff looked like crap. So then I said, I've got to look at really good photographers. So I started to look at magazines, look at photographers, and I found photographers online. And that really helped because then I saw images that I love. And everything I loved was landscape. And that's when I knew. I said, this mm. must be what I like. I like, to, I like to look at these. And then I found a guy I really liked who was called Darwin Wiggett, and he was in Canada. And in 2009, I finally said, I've got to do a seminar with him. Because I had by then gotten a new SLR, I had a Canon, a 20D, and then I got a, a Canon, the, the Mark One, the Mark Two. Now I've got the Mark Three. But I grant at that time I only had a 20D, so I went to Canada and I took over a week seminar with him, and I knew nothing. I mean, I didn't know about filters. He taught me about filters, he taught me about what lenses to use for landscape. It was very intensive. It was great, and then I came back and spent thousands. Because I had the wrong tripod, I had the wrong lenses, I had all the wrong crap equipment, I had all junk. So you come back and you're broke now. You got all your stuff and you're broke. So then I went back with him again with the right equipment, the right filters, and then my shots were better. And then I practiced all the time at home. I shot all the time, went out as often as I could, shot, and then I bought a point and shoot to carry with me everywhere. So I would point, use the point and shoot every time I wanted to shoot, no matter what, I, what it was, I would shoot. So then I gradually improved until pretty soon my work was kind of good. And then I joined the Photography Society of Rhode Island, which Gary is also a member. And um, I started to compete in competitions. And then my images got better and better. And then I went with Darwin like three more times to Canada, mm -hmm. worked with him there, and then worked with other really good landscape photographers, John Shaw, Jack Dykinga, specifically landscape people. And that helped me tremendously. And I've done that for years. Uh, Ian Plant. A lot of the really good photographers. The only one I haven't gone with is Mark Adams because you have to camp out. And that's rough. You know, mm -hmm. you're yeah. walking miles, you're camping out. He's, he, it's, it's a tough thing. I'm going to try to do one maybe with him. But anyway, my work got, got, and then all of a sudden Getty Images approached me and wanted to handle my stock images. And then I started to sell things. And then I just started a website, started to sell things, had a couple of shows here in Rhode Island. And, um, and that was it, you know, and that, that's the story. Wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Since you mentioned equipment, um, what kind of lenses do you recommend for landscape photography? Like what wide focal angles. lengths and, yeah, you know. Wide angles are, are the key to great landscape photography. As wide as you can get, but not, I've got an 11 and 24, the new Canon one. It's mm -hmm. a specific lens you would not use it all the time. The one I use all the time, my money lenses are the 17 to 40 or 16 to 35 and the 24 to 105. 
those are those two cannon lenses. I don't know what Nikon, but I think they have something similar. I think Nikon is a 14 to 24 and a 16 to 35. Those are your money lenses. But yep. sometimes I use the 70 to 200, 70 to 300. When I was in Patagonia, you can't get near Fitzroy. It's magnificent, but you have to shoot it from a mountain across from a river. So you've got to use a 300 lens. I had to use a 300 millimeter. I couldn't get close enough. Mm. So I, those are the three I use almost all the time. 1740, 24105, 70 to 300. And I use the fisheye occasionally, a 15 millimeter fisheye occasionally, if it's the right spot. And at night, the 15 millimeter is spectacular. I use it at night because it gets a lot of the sky in. Oh, wow. And I use filters on my camera all the time. All right. So what are your favorite filters? So my favorite, my favorite, I never use Coke in their crap. The only, the filters I use are always um, Singray, the Singray mm -hmm. filters, I, three stop grad, five stop grad, 10 stop solid, three stop solid, five stop solid, um, blue gold polarizer, a regular polarizer. And that's about it. That covers about everything. But All right, this, so. The two that you use the most are the three stop solid and the three, three stop grad that covers almost every sky. So those are the only two you really need. But for real long exposures, you need the five stop. You need a ten. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the day, you got to use a ten, or it's going to be too bright. I see. So for people that don't know, when you say grad and solid, um, a graduated neutral density filter starts off dark at the top and gradually goes to clear at the bottom. Right. So they usually use that to darken down a sky, right? Right. When if the sky is too bright, which it usually is when you're shooting at sunset. That darkens the sky, brings the exposure of the sky in line with the, with the foreground. So everything is the correct exposure. Rather than a blown out sky, you've got a, a sky that's correct. Okay. And um, the other thing you can do, use is have you ever a, a reverse neutral density? It's dark at the top, it's a little bit darker in the middle, and then mm -hmm. nothing at the bottom. And that's if the sun is right at the horizon, it's, it's, it, it'll just take out that extreme brightness so it doesn't mm -hmm. blow out the sun. Okay. In a neutral density, like I said, it's solid. And the only time I use that is water. If you need it, it's very bright. You need to get the water movement of water. Mm -hmm. You put that and just throw the three steps solid on. Yeah. It's kind of like putting sunglasses in front of your lens, right? It is. Exactly. It's exactly. It's controlling. You're controlling your exposure rather than blowing your exposure, which mm -hmm. I have done in the past. <laughs> and then there's mirror lockup. A lot of people use it. I, I don't use it. But you know what? You, you, I don't know if you use it when you shoot, Gary. But I use it for night photography. I haven't used it for daytime photography. Some but people use it during the daytime. They do. They yeah. do. What, what's this? Chat's closed. Okay. Let me just move this thing a little bit. Okay, forget that. Now, what about live view? Since you mentioned um, live view mirror like lockup. Lock That's right. So it I does shoot on mirror. live view and it does mirror lockup. So you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about doing it and doing the two clicks of the shutter, which can That's drive right. me crazy. So do you use live view when you do your landscapes? Almost yeah. all the time. What I do is I sort of frame it at first with the, with the viewfinder. I'll look, mm -hmm. kind of get my ID, and then I put it right in live view. Because in live view, it's bigger. You can see if there's any junk around the edges. So mm -hmm. it's a lot. I, I find it really, really great. Live view is the best. Yeah. All right. How about focusing? Are you uh, autofocus or manual focus? Well, when I have my tilt shift, it's manual. But I got rid of it because it's a pain in the ass. Uh -huh. So now I use autofocus, but I focus a third of the way in. If you're doing a landscape and it's mm -hmm. a, a giant scene where you're trying to take in as much as you can, you're going to focus a third of the way in because you're going to be shooting at F16, 18, 22, and everything will be in focus in front of you from like a foot away to, from then on into infinity will be in focus. That's right. So... Um... I've heard a lot of people say, oh, you should shoot at F-16 and don't go above. And then you hear someone like Brian Peterson say, oh, I shoot at F-22 all day I long. I shoot at F-22 all the time. I'm in total agreement. I have yeah. never seen diffraction at F-22, not in my lenses. But I know a cheap lens will diffract. Mm -hmm. So if you get a good lens, like a Canon L or a good Nikon, you won't get diffraction. I shoot at F-22 all the time. I never see diffraction. It's just sharp front to back. All right. So I agree with Brian Peterson on that one. Okay. <laughs> now, some people have uh, taken up a new digital technique. Instead of stopping down that far, um, they'll stack images in a focus stack. Have you tried that? I've, tr I've tried that, and the, the master of it is Mark Adamus. You know Mark Adamus. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
he'll focus on the foreground. Get, and if there's wind, it's great because if everything's moving, you can shoot fast. Stop mm -hmm. the foreground, the middle ground, nobody's going to know if it's moving. Shoot that and shoot the background and then just stack the three images in Photoshop. Just paint through each one with a layer mask. Mm -hmm. I have done that. Yeah. So are you a fan of that technique then? Not all the time. It's a pain. Yeah, it's a lot more work. A lot more work. But if it's an image worth it, if, if I were at a spot and it was really windy but it was gorgeous, I would do it. You have to. Hmm. Or at least do it for the foreground and then blend them together. At least get the foreground not moving. Because the, sometimes the blur, I don't think the blur looks good in landscape images in the foreground. Hmm. It's distracting. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else and that we've done? Panos. panos are fun. Vertical panos. Right. Do that a lot. Just flip the camera. And I advise people, if you're just starting out, to get an L bracket mm -hmm. for your camera. So you can easily flip it from one end to the other. I used to have a, a head. I don't know if you've seen those, the tripod head that Manfrotto. you got to turn the whole head over to, to shoot vertically, and it's a pain. It's much easier to flip the camera. I yep. love it. I'm still using the, fl the flipping Manfrotto. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, that flip Manfrotto, I said, that's it. <laughs> I'm done. So then I get the really right stuff, ball head. Right. With, with the clamp. And then with that bracket, you just flip it. And it's great even for um, panos because it's so stable. Mm -hmm. it just it's great. I love it. Yeah. So again, for those people that don't know, you can buy a special L bracket that fits on your camera so that you can shoot horizontally and then take the camera off and then shoot vertically without having to tip your whole tripod off right. to the side. And it's much more stable and uh, probably a lot easier to work with. Huh? And I, re I recommend if you can get the best tripod you can buy, like yeah. carbon fiber. And it's going to be a little bit heavy. Get a heavier one and get one without a center column. That is the worst piece of crap, those center columns, because the farther you pull it up, the more unstable your, your tripod becomes. Right. So you're better off to get one without a center, and that way you can lay it flat on the ground if you have to. And that's really good. But it's got to be tall enough you know, that it's, it's above your, your head if you have mm -hmm. to climb on something and shoot. And what brand of tripod do you use? I like a Gitzo, but they're yeah. expensive. You know, those babies mm. cost money. And the oh, yeah. right stuff makes good ones. At first they were crap because the legs kept falling off, but now they've got some new kind of a cement in there. Now the legs oh. don't fall off. they got a new glue or something. New mm. grease. It's a new grease. It's like a, a lock tight grease, and it does, the legs don't fall off your tripod anymore. Oh, very good. <laughs> you go in salt water, my recommendation is clean your tripod the minute you get home. I've had the Gitzo 10 years. And I've been in salt water, and it's been under the underwater. It's fallen in water. I just rinse it when I get home, put it back together, and it's fine. Mm, good. You can't leave salt on any tripod because yeah. it'll corrode everything. Great. So what about uh, composition? Do you, Are there certain compositions that you prefer, like a near, far, or a... Uh, you know, foreground, middle ground, background, or you just kind of work with what you're I given. I work with whatever, whatever I'm given. I don't yeah. look for something specific. When I look for something, it's something that I get excited about. When I'm out shooting, if I see something, I say, wow. And if that makes me go, wow, then I start to figure what I'm going to do. If it's going to be near far, if I'm going to have to zoom in and do an intimate landscape, mm -hmm. it, it depends on what I'm looking at. Usually if you're down at the beach here in Rhode Island, at the coast, you're going to do the near far. You're mm -hmm. going to foreground, mid, background. But sometimes you might want to just zoom in on a lighthouse and just get that. It mm -hmm. depends. It really depends. But you can't beat good composition. That, that's the main thing. If you've got a crappy composition, I don't care how beautiful the thing is, it's going to look like junk. So you've got to really work. I think composition takes a lot of practice. It really sure. does. It's like a graphic designer. It's like you're putting together graphic design. Do you research your locations before you go to them? Well, yeah, I use uh, the photographer's ephemeris. I'll look at Google Earth. Mm -hmm. I do. I look where the sun's going to come up, where it's going to set, where the moon's coming up, where it's going to set. Time sunrises, what time sunset is, what time the tides are going to change. Because I don't know mm -hmm. if I want high, low tides. Sometimes you don't want those waves crashing over you if you're in the water. You want low tide. It, it, I definitely do that. Mm -hmm. I do research. Sure. All right. Can you think of anything else that we that we might not have mentioned? That's uh, good landscape tips. Um, I think we covered a lot of it. God, so we far. covered a lot of stuff. Let me. Yeah, we did filters and composition and lenses and tripods. The main thing is buy the best camera you can afford, mm -hmm. an SLR. But even if it's a, a mirrorless, I use I have a mirrorless. I have an Olympus mirrorless, and it's and it's great in certain circumstances. 
Mm -hmm. It's not good for night photography. It's very slow. So you learn to adjust. You can't shoot with a mirrorless a sunset at f22. Mm -hmm. It just won't. Work. You shoot it at f8. The sense is so small. The only mirrorless that works like an SLR is the the Sony, the the 7R. Right. That's a, that's a full size sensor. What do you have, Gary? I don't even know what camera you have. I use the Canon 5D Mark III. Okay, uh, that's the same one I have. Yeah. They're great low light cameras. Mm. But I've had you know everything from cameras that. That, I, uh, that suck. I used to have um, an Olymp uh, the E Volt, the Olympus E Volt, the four thirds, and it was yep. horrible in low light. So I got rid of it. You, if you've mm. got a camera and it's not doing what you want, you get rid of it. Right. And you invest in what you do want, and if you invest in maybe two or three good lenses, that's all you really need. Mm -hmm. are two or three really good landscape lenses. Sure. I also use the GH4 as my micro four thirds camera for when I want to do video, but it also takes pretty nice images also for you know it's only like a 16 megapixel camera yeah it's like the yeah. Olympus at 16 but it takes yeah. great images if i just and it, if you want something light i can fit three cameras in a little tiny bag i mean two yeah. lenses and the camera in a bag and if i want to go light that's what i do great but it's not going to give me the same results that i get with the camera. sure sure not going to. all right do you have some images that you wanted to show us i do i have some images. all right i'm going to screen share all right. So while, when you screen share, I'm going to shut my camera off for a minute because okay. that way I won't pop into your. And I'll discuss you know. each one just to give you some clues. Okay. I just shut myself off. Okay. <laughs> no, I think it's on share. Let me know if you sit you there. Yep. I can see okay. your whole screen. You can see my screen. Cool. Oh, I'm popping up though. So I guess I shouldn't talk. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter if my camera's on then. Okay, you can see this image then. Yes. Okay. This is the Tetons. This is at night, maybe 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Move this thing out of my way. And this is taken with the 1740. And uh, I was across the lake or the river. This is actually the Snake River. And this is when you shoot at night. You never shoot more than 25 to 30 seconds. If you shoot 30 seconds or more, you're going to get star trails, small ones, and it looks like hell. Mm -hmm. you want star, just star points, and this is star point, and that's the Milky Way over there. So that's the Grand Tetons. Now, isn't the 17 to 40 an F4 lens? You that's had an a, F4, so you got to. It shoot worked it. all right for shooting uh, the night sky. Yes, it does. If you shoot at 6400. Okay. If you have an F2.8, I shoot at 3200. Okay. So, and that works. That works just fine. No, this isn't, no, the, I'm sorry. This isn't the 1740. This is my 24 to 70 F2.8. This is at 3200. I forgot to tell you about that lens. That's my night lens. The 24 to 70 F2.8 is a great lens for night. And that's the Canon one. And at 3200, 25 seconds, you got it made. It'll do a great night shot. And this is a fisheye. This is in a church in uh, Iceland. That's Reykjavik. And this yeah, that's is what really it cool. Give you. It can give you the most amazing. I was laying on the floor on my back. You don't care what people think. What do you care? <laughs> you lie on your floor in the on the floor on your back, and you shoot straight up. And it's this is an organ, but isn't it cool? It's a phenomenal. I love. Yeah, that. that's awesome. It gives you a phenomenal image. And this is probably with the seven. Yeah, this is probably the twenty four one hundred five because this waterfall is a little far away. And this is at, at f22. I didn't have a, any kind of filter on. It was an overcast day. And at f22, I could get nice water movement. And it gave me, you know, maybe five seconds, six seconds, whatever it was. It was, it was enough to give me, give me nice movement. I don't like that rough water look. I like it to look a little soft. And I don't like the mist look. And this is, um, let's see, ma uh, that's ma mammoth. The it's the. Um, it's a steaming hot geyser dome kind of thing. And this, these are all hot pools of water steaming. And I yeah. just kind of like the graphic elements in here, these dead trees and the steam coming up from behind. It just gives it a kind of, and the, these weird rock formations all around. It's kind of cool. Really cool. It's really cool. And this, this is in Iceland. This is a major main water, one of the major waterfalls. It's one of the most famous ones. It was Seljafoth. The thing is, 
this picture, it was a gray day. There was a lot of fog. It was all dropping on the on, on down below the mountains, and there was steam coming out of here where it was hot and cold because it was such a cold day. The water's a little bit, I mean, war, it was a warm day. It was 70, and the water's cold, and it's steaming. And the thing is, everything looked monotone. So when it, everything looks monotone, yet you've got some total changes. I usually convert to black and white, and I think this works well in black and white. So uh, that's what that that's what that is. If you've got an image and you kind of like it, but there's not enough color diversity in it, and these rocks are all kind of brownish gray, I just convert to black and white, and it can look really good. And this is Beaver Tail in Rhode Island, beautiful sunset. I like the diagonals. Diagonals mm. are really good, and, and that's what that is. And, it, and I don't like the reflection in the water. And I got it's it's at f22. It slowed the water. I had a grad on the sky at three stops. And if you're doing lighthouses, always make sure the light's on. I wait till it turns toward me. I, I, you never take one at night without a light on. And this is the Newport Bridge. And this is at low tide because the only time you see these rocks are at low tide. And it's a long exposure. Sun had just set. And this is fog kind of rolling in. You can see it on the bridge. And it's just a long exposure, maybe maybe a minute. Because the water really smoothed out here. I kind of Yeah. Like and here's beaver tail on a, a more stormy day. Lights on, which is what I wanted. Clouds are dramatic. And this is one of a series of many shots. But I like this one because some were too white, much white water, too much green water. It's sort of balanced. And I like the light hitting this rock in the foreground. And this is the foreground, mid, and, and background. The sky is kind of your background. This is a three-dimensional type landscape. Mm -hmm. and this is actually a macro that I did. And this is um, the one that's on that poster for Dryden Gallery. Yeah, it's beautiful. And this one is, I've, I've sold many times through Getty Images. And this is one of my favorite landscapes. This is in Canada. Mm -hmm. This is the Mastaya Valley. And this is when I was not only shooting maybe three or four years. It might have been with the 20D, but I was with Darwin Wiggett. I found a spot up on this hill. They're all photographers here. They're all cloned out. It's four or five of them cloned out. Foreground, midground, and at this one moment, only one moment, this cloud lifted and the mountain showed the Mastaya Mountain in the back. And it, without it, other people I was with had just just fog here. But when it wow. lifted, I got the shot of this mountain, which is really cool. Yeah, that's an awesome image. That's why you have to wait for the right moment. And this is now this is taken with a 300 millimeter. This is sunrise at Fitzroy, Patagonia, and I'm way across this river. I'm a long way away. But with 300 millimeter, I could get this whole mountain and get the first rays of sun hitting the mountain. And it's really cool. And there's the road that leads to it hmm. on this highway, and that's Fitzroy. And I'm telling you, you come down this road, and you look in front of you, and you see this mountain, and it blows your mind because it's so spectacular. I've never uh. seen one like it. I saw this in a magazine maybe eight years ago, and I knew. I said, i got to see it. <laughs> the magazine <laughs> isn't going to do it. And then I went with Ian Plant. On wow. one of his tours, and I was able to shoot it. How did you know where was the good vantage point to get to, or did he, he tell you where to he go? He told you. And over here, now you see this mountain. I'm over here on this other mountain looking toward it, and there are at least 100 to 200 photographers there. Wow. From all these tours, all these people were all lined up wanting to kill each other for a spot, for a good spot to take it, and this wasn't a bad spot. And this is, we're, we're on this road heading toward El Calten to be closer to the mountain. But this is where you shoot it from on this road. And you climb over this, this fence along here, you climb along the fence. There's a trail, you go down the trail and go to the other mountain and shoot this. This is after sunrise, you can see the lights flat. But it's mm -hmm. still a nice shot. Yeah, it was still on the is. cover of, um, of um, what was it? The Lonely Planet's guide to guide to the best places for travel in 2015. So this is the cover image. Nice. And this is at um, in Utah. This is at uh, Arches National Park. And this is a rock formation, right in Arches. And this is at night again. This is with the fish eye, but I did a lens correction. Otherwise, it was like this, distorted. You know, Gary. Yep. It was up like this, but I just I did the lens correction in Photoshop. And I liked it better with the correction, and there's the Milky Way next to it. And this, with the fish, I had 2.8. This is probably 
You never want to go over 500. Your focal length times time can never be over 500. So if your focal length, like this, is 15, you could probably go 40 seconds, but you wouldn't, I mean 30 seconds, but you wouldn't want to. You'd want to do about 25 seconds. This is about 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. Because 450 would give you 20 seconds, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd give, mm -hmm. give you about 20 seconds. And this is at night with a fisheye again. This is in um, Iceland, and this is the Ice Lagoon. If you, you've heard of it, Jokul Sarlan, the Ice Lagoon. And these mm -hmm. are the icebergs, and this is the aurora over the Ice Lagoon. We only saw it one night. I was there two weeks, and it was only there one night, but it's spectacular. And that's, again, with the fish eye corrected. Now, is it the lens is corrected, or are you correcting it in Photoshop? I corrected the image in Photoshop. Okay. Because this image was super wide, and this was all, it was, the, the water was like this, or maybe like this, like this because it's at the bottom. The water was U-shaped, and mm -hmm. the sky was massive, and this thing was all distorted. But once you hit in Photoshop, in camera raw, it'll know what lens you're, you're using. You know, it has all the lenses of every camera in camera raw. Yep. So it corrected for this particular fisheye lens, and it does a very good job. Any, and, of course, you're going to lose a little bit. I lost a little bit probably at the corners, so I had to crop it in a little. But you have to, if you want to, it, it, it didn't look right as the fisheye. I have the fisheye image, but I didn't like it. And this is um, Castle Hill at night looking back toward the bridge to get the lights on the bridge. Long exposure, water is soft. I like soft water. And, of course, the lights on. Whenever you shoot lighthouses, it's important. You let the light turn five times, then you have to cover the lens with your hand or a piece of black stuff mm -hmm. every time the light comes around or you blow that light and that looks like hell and that's my little slideshow oh those images are fantastic thank, thank you, you very I'm much show you one more thing about photographing here i am this is in oregon and this is cape kawanda and it's fog you see you can see how dense the fog is mm -hmm. and you're sitting there and you, you know this isn't the shot so you wait now, a long period of time, maybe a half hour, I can see it's starting to burn off. And I'm waiting again, another 20 more minutes. Now I see blue sky here. Notice these rocks are all kind of monotone. Waiting. Now a little bit more. Now sun is broken through the clouds, and it's hitting this hill, uh, this cliff. But the waves are sucky, so you don't want that shot. So you wait. You wait. Then the light hit the cliff. The waves broke and came down. But because they're all monotone, I convert it to black and white, and it looks just really cool in black and white. Yeah. And it's a, a really nice image. And that's what it amounts to when I landscape shoot. You just take your time and wait. I'll give you one more. Okay, here's um, – this is Tari del Pine. <laughs> this is in um, Chile. This is a, a beautiful mountain range in Chile. This is a famous range. And this is the top of it, and I zoomed in close, and this is towards sunset, and the light only hits this one mountain at sunset. So I'm waiting, and it's sunset, and it's overcast, and it's crap. So now, here I am. I zoom out a little more. I like it better. I like including these. And these are the Towers of Pain. And over here, it's starting to hit, but there's not enough light. So I'm waiting. Now, this is, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I'm sitting there waiting. Now light's hitting this spot, and it's the only place it's going to hit. It will light these little, and it will only hit here at night. So I'm waiting, and this looks pretty good. And then I'm getting, and now I like it more. And you may not think so. You'd say, oh, no, there's more light here. But here, there's light and shadow. Mm -hmm. There's more dimension. And that's the one I edited. And this is what I got when I finished. Wow. So once you saturate a little bit, bring up the vibrance, it's spectacular. So that's what can happen. And that's the same exact. This is the image, and here it is finished. So it makes yeah. a big difference if you take your time and you, and you find, and you can see. And here I knew. I said, this is going to be a great image. And it doesn't look it because that's the raw image. Mm -hmm. But once you edit the raw image, you know you can get something really good. Sure. That just goes yeah. to show beginners that, that you know, you even can, if you take a great shot in the camera, you can still really bring a lot out of it in whatever image editing software exactly. you're using. Exactly. Very good. Excellent photos. And I love how you showed how the patience really pays off, waiting for the right time. Your timing. Everything in landscape to me is the light and the timing. How many times I've been to the beach and there's nothing. Or I've been to the mountains. I've been to the mountains, to Canada, like six, seven, eight times. And maybe only four times it's been really good. 
Mm -hmm. And you make the best of what you have, but the great images come with the great light. Light is everything in landscape. That, that's mm -hmm. the important thing. And it's being patient, waiting for it, waiting, waiting, waiting until that one. And that light on that mountain lasted maybe a minute. So you have your one minute, you take your shot, and you're done. And usually now, because of my experience, I can tell when I've got the shot. And I'll think, okay, now I'll look for something else because I got that. I, I'll know looking at the back of the camera that it's going to be the good one. But oh, that yeah. comes with time. I mean, I have so many images I could show you now that suck so bad you'd want to vomit. I mean, <laughs> there are images <laughs> that I still take that are crap, but I delete them. You know, it, it's, you know, you yeah. go, you have high hopes, and things don't, the sky never lights up. It looks terrible if it's flat. But now you know enough to get that shot to and away. move on to something else. That's right. right. Move on to, or try something else. If yeah. the shot doesn't come, I'll try something else. I'll try to zoom in, do something more intimate. I, I try to work with whatever's that you have to. You work with it, whatever nature gives you. Right. And maybe Fantastic. You, one, you get a good shot. <laughs> mm. All right. Those were fantastic. Great inspiration. Good. And, and it's good and, to see it from beginning to end, too. When they look like nothing, and then they slowly, you wait for the light, and then they become good. Right. And all of those pictures that I showed you, you know, there were moments when the light was bad. But they were, that picture of Fitzroy with the golden light, you know, we sat there an hour waiting, waiting, waiting. And we went back three days. The first two days, there was no light. You leave. You come back. You sit another morning. Then you get the golden light. Hmm. And that's, I think that's the secret to landscape, being patient. Okay. Never giving up. I never give up. I, I'll go back until you know, what the heck. Keep trying hmm. until I get what I want. So you have a mental picture of kind of what you're looking for before you go out. No, no. A lot of people say to me, "Oh, I pre, I preconceive. I have a preconceived notion of what I want." I go, "I don't even know what I want." Okay. But I, I'll know when I see it. Right. I stop. Looking. How do you when you shoot, Gary? Do you have an idea of what you're going to shoot of what you're looking for? No, I'm kind of more off the cuff. <laughs> yeah, me too. I am because light change. I can't go like to Point Judith or the lighthouse and say, "Oh yes, here's how I've conceived this image. I'm going to conceive a wave hitting here, and this is going to happen." No, I go whatever. If something good, if I see good things happen, then I go toward the good things and try to photograph the good things. That's right. <laughs> and I think that's what you have to work with. Whatever you get, it's hot. I don't know how people even can think that. That they have, a, I mean, I have a preconceived notion of a landscape, but I don't know where it's going to be, what it's going to be. True. Uh, my problem when I go out and do landscape photography is I'll get to a nice spot and I go, oh no, the sun's coming up, and I rush around and I try to find something interesting to, to line up it's in nice my shot. It and... happen. <laughs> I know. I guess true. I'm not prepared enough when I get started. <laughs> Well, what I do is I usually go way before sunset. I give myself at least an hour or sometimes an hour and a half to prepare. Mm -hmm. And I just start looking, 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 looking for angles, looking for diagonals, looking for things that might interest me, things that will draw a viewer's eye. That's what I always look for, things that will draw your eye. Mm -hmm. and, and once I see that, and then I'll wait. Then I wait for the light and I'll say, okay. And then I'll just move around that one area and I'll stay there. If, if that's the spot I feel reflections are good. If I go to um, Beaver Tail, if I see a puddle, I'll go right to the puddle. Mm -hmm. And you can bring water. If you get those fold up containers, five gallon, bring your water. I make puddles. Oh, cool. My husband carries the water. <laughs> you spill water on a rock. And you may, and if you're, the lower you bring your camera, the better the reflection of the lighthouse will be or of anything that you want to reflect. So mm -hmm. just fill a five-gallon container with water, and you bring that with you, and there's your puddle. Oh, great tip. And there's your reflection. <laughs> it makes a great – it'll look like a lake. If you mm. put your camera on the edge of it, it'll look like a lake's in front of you. Mm. It works very, very – I did that in um, Utah. Fantastic you're, idea. You're in arches, you can get great shots of, of – um, there's a huge one that's, that's like a tower. You just we, – we spilled a little puddle. The puddle was like this big around, three feet around. Mm -hmm. And we laid our cameras there, and it was fantastic. We were at a lake taking a picture, and somebody said to me, I didn't know it rained that much in Utah. I said, <laughs> no, it doesn't really, but we made a puddle. Well, that's a fantastic and idea. it gives you wonderful reflections. So that's a very good thing to do, to bring water with you. Hmm. Well, I guess I have to get up earlier then, and I won't have but, to rush so much. <laughs> yeah, you, no, don't rush. If you feel you're rushed, then you're getting up too late. you got to right. go earlier. 
Good. That's why I do sunsets. They're easier. Yeah. It's hard for me in the morning to get moving. Although sometimes I can. Mm -hmm. Me too. I'm not a morning person. No, neither am I. I'm more active at night. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I'm thinking I'm taking up night photography. <laughs> That's why I like night photography. Night photography is fun. There's a really good night photographer called Roman uh, Kriachki. Yeah, I've been out with him before. I can't ever say his last name. Kriachik. Roman Kriachik. He's very good. Oh, if you okay. want to learn night photography, I recommend him. And once you go with him, you know, because it's only basic principles for night photography. And once you know it, you need a, 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 a very low f-stop lens. You need a 2.8, a 4 is the max you should ever use at night. And mm -hmm. it's got to be wide angle. You don't want to go over maybe 24. Mm -hmm. You want it as wide as you can get because you want the night sky. Otherwise, you know, you zoom in at 70, you're losing most of the night sky. Yeah, true. So the fisheye, I find the best. You will love the fisheye at night. Mm. When did you get your fisheye? You just got it? Yeah, a few months ago, but I I got the fisheye for my uh, GH4, not for the Canon, just okay. because it it was it was a cheap version that I wanted to test out to see if I liked the fisheye yeah. effect, and so far I like it. So <laughs> we'll see. I like, look how great it worked in that church. You know, in churches I use it a lot. If I'm in a cathedral, mm -hmm. shoot the ceilings. It, it's magnificent. You know, it gives you great angle, and it's something yeah. people don't see. I like to shoot right. stuff people don't. See see something different now do you always correct them or do you uh, ever no, leave them not bent? always if i like the bend i've done some at um lake abraham in winter which is in canada and there are bubbles in the in the ice and mm -hmm. those i didn't correct i left the it looks like the earth a round earth with bubbles and ice that if they look good i leave them mm -hmm. but if you you know what to do what i recommend if somebody's got the fish i try it with and without because you can test it right in raw Try it with without. If it looks better with, then leave it in. Okay. Leave the bed. Now, here's the fish eye. Yep. This is good. <laughs> Actually, I like this. Where is this, Gary? That's in Cape Cod. Um, that was, like I said, I just bought the lens and I took it out there and I wanted to test it. I thought it would look cool with the marsh being a little bit bent. and. Uh... I like it. I like it. I just... There's a lot of stuff here. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you really need this. This is what I'm wondering about. Let me just, just do something a minute here. I just wonder if you need these rocks. I just wonder if it's if it's proper. Let me just look at that. How does that look? As opposed to that. I don't know. The, oh, maybe the rocks are okay. Sure. I'm not sure what's better, but I think they both look. They both look they good. Both look all right. They yeah. both look good. I like them. What I think is, if you were going to crop it this way, mm -hmm. you'd have to level it. You'd have to use, you know, the. You'd have to do that. Let me. Mm -hmm. just, I've got the original right. Yeah. Let's just do that. Where's the lens correction? Just see how it looks with lens correction. We'll do it. We'll, we won't do it. I'll just do a custom. Kind of like that. Mm. I want to remove as much distortion as I can. Oop, wrong way. Wait, wait, wait one second. No. This actually looks really good to me. Go back to your original. Okay, here's the original. Yep. Here's that. Original. The problem with this is this. Let me just get rid of it. That other guy. Yeah, it seems to simplify the image a bit, huh? I don't know. The rocks just look too cluttered. Mm -hmm. I like it as a panel. This is really good. I'd get rid of just a couple of these little things to keep it simple in the front. I'd get a little bit more water in here. That's really nice. Really, I like, I like it. I like it. Now, let's look at the first one and see what we think. Oops. <laughs> now when I look at this, it looks so cluttered. <laughs> then when I look at this, it looks so so 
simplified and nice. I think they both work, Gary. Yeah. I think they both work. What if we edit this one though? Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to like the second one though. I like it simple. I like the other one better, I have to admit. And this all this junk in here mm. just has to go. It can get some water in there a little bit. That's better. It's gonna take a little work. I'd like I just want to get rid of the clutter of rocks there. It's just too cluttered. That's a little bit this to me doesn't belong in there. It just looks like an an afterthought. Sure. You know, it just looks like I got to get a foreground in there, so I better do this. Was that what you were thinking? I've got to get a foreground. I have. Well, to yeah, it. I was thinking foreground, but also yeah. the fisheye lens is so wide. I was standing on those rocks, and the fisheye lens shoots almost everything from your feet to to the you know infinity. I know, I know. So I almost didn't have a choice. <laughs> no, it's true. You you except get more sky. You're right. Right. Yeah. But I think this is a lot better. And it's really very pretty. But when you get it in Lightroom, can can it do a lens correction? Yes. Wait, you know what? I can just warp it. Let me just warp it a second to give us an idea. This is the transform tool. If, if you warp, you can bring le things pretty much level. Oh, yeah. That seems nice and easy to do. Yeah. It's just, this is just a quick way of doing it. I really like that. I like it better this way than curved. I'm not sure though, wait a minute. What do you think? Hmm. I think I like the curved. This looks good. The curve looks good. I think it gives you more of a look, you feel like you're looking at a large piece of the earth. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it? It's really, yeah. really nice. And I just wonder if you were to take your sponge tool and just saturate a little bit. Whoops, get rid of this earlier. Lower this. More color in there. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a secret, Gary, I'm going to teach you. Okay. You see this up here? This is your sample tool. Okay. Yep. Always keep it around 3x3 three three or 5x5. Five five. Now, you're going to sample this color. There it is on my left. See, it went in there. Now you take a brush, a soft brush, and you want the opacity way, way down, like 6 8%. That's good. But you've got to make sure it's on color. All you want to work with is that color. And you can add that color to your different areas of your image. Smaller. So small. Not cool and big. tools now up oh, good now see here you can see a little bit of the color but I can add some I can add some color here from the sky you could even add color here from the sky if you wanted to can you see a little bit of that pink yeah nice so you can do that but you don't want to overdo it the secret is not overdoing I'll add a little pink in here and you can, usually I run it right along the edge as if it's just picking up the edge of the sky. Okay, now that, that kind of pumps it up a little bit. And we did get rid of this before. There. I think that's very simple and beautiful. It's really pretty. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. Thanks. I like it. I like it. There's only one. I don't know why this mm -hmm. bothers me, but I don't like this pointy thing here. So we just transform it. Transform is your friend. Warp it mm -hmm. a little bit down. Just a little bit down. Okay, now. Now, when you use transform, see how it moved a couple of things? There's a yep. layer mask. You click on that. You take a brush and you get rid of any distortion that you've created. That'd be 100. Yeah. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Let me just look at this first. Before, after. Better, huh? Yeah. You can clone in a little grass here. Just didn't like that extreme sharp point pointing out there. Oh yeah, that's so much better now. Here's now we go back to the original. There we are with this, which is 
cluttered bunch of mess. See that now? Now you're thinking that, aren't you? Yep. Now you're looking at this, which is simple, beautiful, and elegant. Okay? Right. All right. Next picture. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Let's see the sky. All right. This is a piano. I like this. The be what, what would you – now, this isn't yours, is it, Gary? No, it's not mine. Okay. Now, the, the only thing I would say about this, I don't know, I think you may agree with me, it's a bad time of day. Middle of the day is a killer mm -hmm. to take an image. But, you know, you're stuck with what you get. So you take your middle of the day image. It's actually, there's enough that keeps you interested. I get rid of this stuff right here. Just get rid of these trees right here. Just these two that are messing it up. And there's really nothing but you can do. You can't change the light. The light is what it is. There is one thing you, you could do if you want to really get dramatic. You take a selection. You edit. Transform your scale. And you make that mountain look bigger. Hmm, that's cool. And that helps it a little bit. The mountain's a little more impressive. you got to do a layer mask. You click that. Make sure the layer mask is highlighted. And just get rid of that demarcation line. Okay. And that looks a little cool. The mountain's a little bit bigger, looks a little bit better. And the other thing you could do is take the sponge and sort of saturate these trees a little bit. Give them a little more orange. Orange and blue goes go good together. They're complementary. Let me look at this. There's some little junk here you might want to get rid of. But otherwise, what can you what do you think, Gary? Anything else you can do to this? Um, no, I think it looks good. Yeah, it looks um good. is uh, is there a little white haloing around the mountain itself? You think I'm the not sky? Sure if that's the way the the edge of the see the sky here. It's light toward the horizon. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Uh, it doesn't look like haloing because here it doesn't have it. So I think it's just along the horizon. It doesn't look over overly sharpened to me. Mm -hmm. I would get rid of this this whatever this thing is. This bush it keeps drawing my eye to that. Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of that bush. And the other thing you could do is you could vignette it slightly. And, and But, you know, you don't have a lot to work with as far as a vignette. And there is a grad. You know, you could, could put a grad in and darken it a little bit. Whoops, I lightened it. Get the dark grad. Oh, it's on the pink. Don't want it pink. You want it black. So you could use a grad, and, and that might help it a little. Bring your eye into the image. Mm -hmm. I think that works a little bit better. That's sort of, oh, it looks like a stormy sky now. That actually might be a bit much. Remove a little bit of it. But you could use a grad and darken your sky a little bit. But I'll tell you, if I were going to do this, I'd try to do it at a different time of day. Sunrise, sunset. This looks like it's late afternoon. The sun's over here somewhere. See the shadows. Okay, new new image. I don't. There's nothing much more you can do to this. Sure, that. yeah. Okay, this one is this one is a long time of day. To okay, first of all, you need a grad on this one, a graduated neutral density. The sky is so blown and bright. You can't even see. You can see it's blue, but that's about all you can see. So if you used a graduated neutral density, just give me a little bit of blue on here. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, just drag that down a little bit. And darken that blue a little bit and make it a little bit bluer, but that's about it. This picture, I would never do this time of day. You'd want to do in these, and uh, and another thing you don't want to do is cut off a building like this. So if you were going to do this, crop it right over here. So you got that building in, or get this whole building in over here. The good thing is, because it's a good reflection, you want to crop dead center. That's the only time I put a horizon in the middle, is if you've got a good reflection. See, this reflects top and bottom really well. The thing you could do to this is there are filters you could use. There is a Nick collection, Color Effects Pro, and there's Topaz. And they can help an image that's sort of on the edge, like this one. You can mess around with your midtones, bring up those trees. You can mess with the shadows, bring up your shadows. You can lower your highlights a little bit. You can increase your saturation a little bit. 
there are things you can do. But the only other thing you could possibly do to this is black and white. So I pumped it up a little bit. Here it is before. Here it is pumped up. And it does look better. But black and white may be the way to go because it's just so bright. Actually, I like this. What do you think, Gary? I like yeah, black it. Yeah, it looks better black and white. I think black and white will work for this one. That way you can mess with your different... Actually, black and white probably is the best way to go. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Give me this again. And there's a really good black and white... I don't know if you use this, but the Silver Effects Pro is very yeah, good. Yeah, that's what I use. I use this all the time. Use this. Give me a red filter. Oh, whoa, orange. Yellow. Brighten it up. This is real. Look at the difference in it. In yeah. black and white. Okay, so this is what you're going to do with this picture. You're going to convert it to black and white. And it's a real kick butt. Look how cool, gorgeous that is. It's a yeah. totally different image. It's very because now the light is harsh, which is what you want in black and white. You got excellent, excellent, and look, you even have detail now in the sky. So that's your that's the way to go. Black and white on this hmm. one. Middle of the day, black and white. Next good, one. Good tip. <laughs> okay, that's what I do. Middle of the day, if I have no other thing, I'll do black and white. No other choice. Gary, this is your fish eye. Yeah, why don't you skip it and go to another okay, one? Um, I just threw some extra images in there in case they weren't enough. Okay, this is not, this is one of, okay, take a look at this one. Okay, this is overexposed. You can see that because it's, it's, it's a sunset, which is bright. But you need it to hold the sky back a little bit to get some detail in the boat. That's what I think. It's, it's a nice shot. It's a nice angle. The brightness is like out of control. Can we bring the brightness down? I'd like to see a little bit more of the boat. Bring up a little bit of contrast. This, but it's a good shot. Oh my, wait a minute. Black and white? Just to see, just to see. Because the sun is overwhelming. No, not good in black. It has to be in color. I don't know. What do you think, Gary? I, to me, it's just too much light, too much blown. I think I think you mm. need it. Uh, you know what have worked would have worked really well here, and in and in, in neutral uh, neutral de an inverted neutral density grad. Now, if you had an inverted neutral density grad, this would be dark right here. Yep. So it would keep the sun under control. The boat would be clear. The water would be a little bit red, but the boat would be crystal clear. And your sky would be a little more under control and you wouldn't get the extreme light blue at the top. But I like the shot. Hmm. I like the shot. But I would do it with an inverse neutral density grad. And if you don't have one, take your neutral density filter. You graduated. Flip it upside down. That's what I've done. Flip okay. Flip it upside down to the darkest pots right here and the lighter pot there. And this image would be really good. But good it's a tip. good composition. The composition is like, yeah, if you don't have a reverse neutral density, just flip it. And it will work. This one. Oh, this is beautiful, huh? Yeah. I believe these were from a student of mine and uh, took pictures in Anchorage, Alaska. Really, really, really nice. I like the fog bank. You did need a grad. I know the student, I don't, I know they didn't use a grad. But if you had put a grad on here, it would have improved it a little bit. Just lowered the brightness on that sky just a little bit. But you can do that in Lightroom. You can lower it a little bit. Just lower that a little bit. I don't have I don't have camera raw. I could do it, but I can't do it here. And I think a little bit of a curves layer. Bring down those brights. Oh, that's better. You can use a little. Oh yeah, here we go. See now it's not blown, and now it looks cool. I like the curves layer. Okay, without, with. Now now you see how dark everything else is here. So yeah. Have to get rid of that. You just, that's right. Curves gives you this layer mask for a reason. So you paint right through it. So now everything is brought into about the same type of exposure. I, the only thing I would do is here. Now look in the background. You see this light object way in the back here? Mm -hmm. This thing? Gotta go. You gotta, when you take an image, you gotta look around everywhere. And you gotta say, what's gonna attract somebody's eye? And you know the brightest thing 
and a white object is going to attract them. My eye sees this nice red building, which is interesting. I curve with the road, and I see this white, what the heck is that? So that what the heck is that thing must go. So what you do is look for something near it, like a, like a fence or a tree, and on the right layer, you just get rid of it. Now, there's nothing really bright there attracting me that's red, that's white. And this little thing right here should probably go to there. Yeah, now that's now my eye carries right into the right into your image, right to this fog bank for this mountain. Just do one more thing here. I'm going to, but it's a good image. I like that image. Just sharpen it a little bit. Okay. This rock could go. You know, it's up to you. I would get rid of it. Make it go away. I like the footprints, carries your eye, the trail, the trail carries your eye. You got some trees that are, the building's interesting. And then you go right to this beautiful fog bank in the mountain. This is a nice shot. You could crop it a little smaller. And then you decide, is it there or is it not? You know, is it there or do you want it? Let me go back to my history. Do you like it this way? You like which do you like gary i like it longer yeah i like it longer too it too much this is perfect this is a nice image okay next oh boy here's somebody who needs a grab okay this is whoever did this picture you will go out tonight and order your graduated neutral density you will order a three stop that will take care of this and make this a really stunning image. I like that you got foreground in here. This is really cool. You got your nice mid ground, the reflection, and you got a really beautiful background, but the sky is so blown out. And look at the histogram here, it's blown right out. You can see it. There's the exclamation. There's your yeah. so you gotta bring that down. But I'll show you something you can do. You multiply that layer. That brings that sky back down a little bit. The only thing is, you got to put a layer mask and paint through it, and that will bring kind of those, the sky into into control. Bring that mountain back. Now here it is without it, and here it's brought it down a little bit. But you see how blown that is. Yeah. But actually, it does look better this way. Than this oh yeah, much way. better. You, you know, much just multiply. If you have to multiply a layer and paint through it, and that looks better. And I like it, but okay. The only thing missing is the grad. I, I like the foreground. I would like a little, you know, it's a little bit messy looking here, but I don't mind it. I'm telling you, you know, there's a bunch of grass and a bunch of rocks. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Right? Okay. Oh, whoa. Oh, this is good because we can see it. There's a color cast. Okay. This is actually a nice waterfall. It, to me, it's a little too long of an exposure. It's soft. Maybe a little too long, but the main problem is color cast. It's green. So if you look at color balance, move it out of the green a little bit. Whoop, too much. Let me see the original one. It's just way too green. I don't want the color. I don't want that. I want selective color. This doesn't do it. Let's try selective color. Okay, selective color. The greens are a bit too intense. Let's bring, bring the yellows back a little. Bring them back. Bring cyan back. Oh, let's see. You can even see a difference. Yes, I do. Okay, here's before. Hmm. Look at these trees. Extreme green. Greener than they should be. Now with this, it's brought it back under control. Extreme green, normal green. Okay, so mm -hmm. we got the green where we want. You don't need all this below you. Bring this in a little bit. That's better. Just try to put the waterfall. Here's my rule of thirds. Let's put the waterfall on the grid. Let's take it off the grid. Put it on the grid. Off the grid. 
don't know. I kind of like it, like it, like centered. That one. Back to this. I think this is the best composition. Gary, what do you think? Yeah, I think it is also. I don't think this is. It's too much at the bottom. Right. But I think this is good. You see just enough of the water. Now, you notice this water is probably this color then. It's probably this yellowish color. And I like the fog in the back. But you can change watercolor. You can <laughs> change it a little bit. And I would change it here. Um, come on, give me the color. Now here the color is blue. I'm taking a brush, making it that color, but I'm making it very, very pale. Make it maybe opacity five percent. Brush back. <coughs> Excuse me. Just paint it a little bit. <coughs> I hate having a cold. Too, too greenish. This is going to look terrible here, but it won't on the picture. Right. <coughs> okay, I've taken away with that adding of the blue. Some of this yellowish tone, uh -huh. and you kind of got have to get rid of that yellow. It's just it doesn't look right. Too much. Go back. Here's the yellow. Here's a little bit of blue. See how it's gone? Yep. Let me take a look at color balance for a minute. Okay, let's look at this. This or this? Better, huh? The color balance. And this yeah. is without it. This is original. This is with it. I think that. Yeah. All right, now we got the. Shut everything off. All right, here's what we. Here's your original. No, that's actually not your original image. Here's your original image. Okay, and now here's what we get at the end. And I like it better. Let's let, and now we've got this added, this added, this added. I think the rocks look more natural now. They're not as orange. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're okay with that. I like that. And I think it didn't need to be cropped except at the bottom. And now wa the water looks like water instead of yellowish stuff like this. Yeah, the whole thing was too warm before, I think. Way too warm. Mm. I love this. But just the color balance taking away a little bit of that yellow. Okay, that looks actually very nice. I love the fog in the back. Okay. That looks good though. All right, where are we now? This one. Oh, black and white. Oh gosh, this is a portrait. Gary, you're good at portraits. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, this is a self. This one. What do you think? This is a self portrait okay. of one of my students. Um... And I thought she did a pretty good job, probably, for one of her first self-portraits. I like it. The only recommendation I would have, and I'm not a portraitist, was this is kind of bright. Right. That takes our eye it to the background. It takes our eye from her face right to this. And, and I want to look at this actually more than her, and I don't want to do that. So I think if she had kept just the wall behind her, and is that a chair? I'm not sure what that is, a couch or something. Right. Cover it with something. Even a dark cloth would look good. Right. And because I like the way she did her portrait. At this point, like may, maybe maybe you could darken it some. I don't know if that would help, but you could. You could. I could burn it. Hmm. Let's, let's just burn it. That's it's a highlight. You could really burn it. That would help it. Yeah, that does that does help it. But there is something yeah. else that you really can do to fix it, and it, it's. We'll see. I'll, I'll get a. Uh, the, you add a levels layer. If you want to just make her the. And what you do is you lower everything to black. Almost totally black. There. Now you see that just she is visible. Yep. 
All right, then you take your brush and you're going to paint through that layer. Is it bigger? Mm. Yeah, just That's on her. Careful, you don't just on her, just the main subject. Make sure she comes through. Turn that. And then you've got to work with a very small brush here so that this sort of just disappears. I like I like that actually, and it's alright that it shows a little bit, but not that it overwhelms her. Right. Using her nose. There, better. Whoops, too much. The other. Some of that, something like that. But if she's gonna, she I know she'll do it again. You got to practice it again. Right. So now you do it again. Get rid of some of this light stuff that's showing. And see, now the focus is entirely on her face. And I really like it. That's a right. great shot. And I like the way she's looking down at the guitar. Right. Yeah. Now we got it. Pretty and just cool. like your building shot when you critique the other one, uh, you watch the hands in this shot. So she's got like half the hand cut off. Uh -huh. So it would be better either to see the whole hand the or whole none of the hand. hand. Yeah. yeah whole the hand would be better. Hand, but the whole hand would be better. Right. All she'd have to do to do it was angle the guitar up a little bit. Maybe right. Lift it a little bit on that side and get, or else shoot a little bit wider. But I like it. I like. I think what she needs to do is get a, a claw, something behind her. You know, four or five feet behind, like a drop claw. Right. Get that behind and set the shot up. Shot up again and do the same thing, because it's it's actually a very good shot, except for that white thing. But you know, you don't know. See, look at that. Look at the difference. Oh that yeah, huge thing. difference. Oh, it's huge difference. All you want to do is look at that white thing. So look at the difference. So it's much better. So now she knows she'll know what to do next time when she does this shot. Okay. This looks like a silhouette image, which it would have to be. You'd probably even okay now, of course the whole sky is blown, but the idea behind this is good. And because on this one, all you want is a silhouette. Mm hmm You just gotta Bring up the shadows. That's your shot right there. Get rid of every every bit of detail. That's it. Yeah. It's the only thing you can do with that. You're shooting directly in the sun. There's your shot. The silhouette against the sun. Yeah. And so when you when you first take the shot, if you maybe switch to a spot meter or something and, and meter off of uh, the, the slide, brighter spot, the other, then yep. and oh, you'll get that effect. You're not going to meter off the plane. You got to meter off no. the sky so the plane turns out black. You got to right. meter off the brightest one of the brightest areas in the background. You're going to meet her off here or there. You're probably better off to meet her off here, a really bright spot. You don't want to meet her off the sun and blow your, blow your, you know, everything will be yep. bright white and the plate will be pitch black. So somewhere over here in the clouds, meet her right there. What else will look at black and white? Because there's just so much contrast. Sometimes something like this will really work in black and white. That's my little mark on there. Mm. Looking for something like this. That's actually pretty cute. I like that. Okay, another another one of candidate. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, it's better in black and white. It's better in black and white. I like that other one with just the extreme. This one. That I like that extreme dark. I I made that mark. So let's do a blue filter. Whoa, scary. No, that right there works. That would work. Black and white works really well. Whenever you see an image, that's what I think when there's extreme contrast, always try black and white. Mm -hmm. Get my mark off there. Yeah. But I like the composition of it, and I like that it's dynamic. It's really dynamic. I like it. What have we here? Oh, this is another Alaska shot. Yep. Okay, this is good because it needs just a little bit of cleanup. It's a nice shot. The problem with this one is <coughs> there's too much foreground. You see, you've got your horizon almost dead center. You know, and who, what's good to look at here? I don't see a lot. I don't see much of anything there. Maybe some shadows. So I mean, that's enough to give you the shadow. Let's crop it there. That looks better. And I see a little bit of something here that you would need to clone out. Always look at your edges. You've got to make sure there's no junk. This junk must go. There we go. Go ahead. Okay, like it was never there. Okay, this tree works because it's far enough in. So now you've lowered it. 
your house is more dynamic than it was before it was like this now you're here and it looks better unless somebody likes do you like this better gary i like this better. no i like it cropped the I, way you i do. like it cropped the way it is i because there's nothing here there's a shadow there but that's not enough this yeah looks good. now the other thing is this person in alaska is going to buy the a two stop or a three stop because you need to bring that that brightness down I'll do yeah. it by multiplying the layer. It's just too much brightness in the sky. I'm not going to multiply. Yeah, that's much better. The you know, whole image looks good multiplied, but let me get on this. Would you do any kind of sharpening to the mountains or clouds or or uh, clarity or something to? If I were in camera raw, or if I could get these into Lightroom for some reason, I can't. I would sharpen them. But you could do. You could unsharp mass. You could sharpen edges mm -hmm. but what i use is i've got an action for sharpening but there's a tool here you can use this is a sharpen tool you've got to use it as a luminosity mask I, you can click it up on the wrong layer get back over there you if you click the sharpen tool this works really well and you can click it on luminosity that way it doesn't really disturb anything put around 39 percent. you can sharpen these mountains pretty well you don't want to overdo it but you, you can sharpen them See that coming in? Yeah, it makes them stand out a bit more. Before, after. Okay, and this is with multiply. See, it's before multiply, nothing's showing up after the multiply, which acts as a grad. So the multiply acted as a grad, brought those mountains really back down again, mm -hmm. sharpened them up a little bit more, sharpened the tree and the house a little bit more. And these, these antlers are kind of cool. Look at that. And this tree doesn't bother me because there's enough of it in your image. But, you know, you could, you could look at this and you could say, do we need that? Okay, there, there's your image simplified, okay? Mm -hmm. You got this, you got this. I think this is better than this. Yeah, I like it cropped, yeah. You see that? It, it's more condensed. This sort of brings your eye out here and there's nothing there. A bush. Here you're condensed. You see the tree now? This tree, and these are cool with these antlers. You see this house, which is cool. You see this tree, which keeps your eye in the image, and the mountains are beautiful in the back. And now it looks really, really nice. And and you also don't need that much sky because there's nothing much above those clouds. So you can bring it down to this. So we got this to this to this. And actually, I think this is the nicest. Yep, I like it. I like it. This to this better it, it's eliminated look at that sky there's nothing up there if there were some really great clouds yes but this is condensed it's, it's interesting your eye goes right to the house into the mountains and the clouds this my eye goes over here after it's kept in by this now it looks great it's really good mm -hmm. okay nice shot nice shot very nice shot okay next one is this this is this is really cool I, I do a lot of mountain shots, so I like this. Now this is this is nice. Yeah, I thought this was my favorite this, of the bunch. <laughs> this is a very, very and this is a tough shot to get. When I first saw it I thought, well maybe square crop. Because don't forget. It's very you'll very but you know, I'm not sure. And then I thought let's just multiply in a minute. Mountain shots usually look really good in black and white. I like this better, a little bit darker. Okay, mm -hmm. here's your lighter image. Here's your darker image. It's more more powerful, don't you think? Yep. Okay, so this gives it a little more power. There's nothing much happening here, but I like the cloud, so I wouldn't get rid of it. I kind of really like it. Let's just look at a black and white. I like it this way. Let's just look at a black and white. Because I always look at mountain shots in black and white. You have to, because of the way, what the because of what they are. Here's the one right up. There. Yeah, I think it really stands out now. <laughs> oh, look at this! Not a red, maybe a yellow, maybe a blue filter. Too light, green. Oh no, that's cool. Okay, here we have our black and white. Now we can compare. Because don't forget, in mountains, there's not a lot of definition. A lot of whoops. 
you know, my sense. Why is this guy showing? Go away. Oh, because this, sorry, this is not why I went to level. Okay, here's our black and white. Here's the other. What do you think? I like the black and white. Yeah. I see more definition in these lower clouds. And don't forget, there is a burn tool. You can burn. So I would do a tiny bit of burning on these bottom guys. A little bit there. Just bring your eye into the image. That's all you're doing. You're bring, burning the corners to bring the eye in a little bit. Burn a little bit right there. Burn a little bit here. This is very, very cool. All right. We got that. We got this. Which one? Yeah, I like the black and white one better. Very powerful. You know why? You've got these. When you do this, the diagonals are okay. But when you see them in black and white, they're very powerful. In mm -hmm. the sky, they're very dramatic. That's really a very nice image. It's a great image. Nice job. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's a very good image. Let me just see levels for a minute. Bring the levels up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Without levels, with levels. Yep, it stands oh. out a little more. Yeah, brings up, brings up the whites a little more. Beautiful image, just a great image. Okay. Okay, here's another one that needed a grad or inverted grad. Because this, I, what I would have done if I was sitting there waiting, I'd say, mm -hmm. okay, this is looking pretty good. But I think I'll wait till the sun drops below the horizon a little bit, get a sun star, and not get everything blown out. Because you can look at, you can see this pink's coming. Imagine how beautiful this will be in maybe five minutes, ten minutes. Okay. So whenever you're shooting directly into the sun, you into think it's sun. better like to wait it to for it? Yes. I think unless there's clouds and it's behind clouds or, or there's a cloud layer and it's going to peek through the cloud layer and light up those clouds, that's when I would shoot it. But I would never shoot directly into the sun unless there was something dramatic there or it was behind clouds, below a cloud layer, or just as it dropped. If this stupid brush smoke. Okay, if this were the sun, I'd wait till it was right here. Then what you get is you get those rays as it's setting and you get beautiful color. All you get now is a blob. Mm -hmm. and who wants to see a, a blob of light? I don't. A lot of people don't. And the foreground is quite beautiful. These are going to light up really beautiful once the sun gets lower. I'm not crazy about this thing, uh, this driftwood piece. I, I don't find it attractive. I don't know. It, to me, it looks like a dead body. I don't know why. <laughs> but it looks like a body there. So I would um, kind of reposition it. I always reposition stuff. Reposition it in a different way. Or um, you can always get, you know, do stuff to it. We'll just fix it a minute. I'm going to make it look a lot less like a body. Just fix it a little bit. Okay. Make it look more like driftwood than a dead body on the body. Okay, now. Get rid of most of it. Okay, it's gone now. I, I don't mind this. I, can I can't even handle this. Okay, let me, let me do a layer mask here. We'll go through it. And see how much of this I want to bring back. This is what I do all the time. You got to figure how much of it you want and what you don't want. This might look good here. Okay, I think that's enough of it to have in the picture. You don't want any more than that. Mm -hmm. Blowing out this. It's just too prominent. That looks okay. A little piece there. Okay, let's bring this in a little bit now. I can try to fix this a little bit, but you know it's blown. The water is blown. So you kind of messed up on this one. You got to do this one again. But what I'll do is flatten it. I'm going to try to multiply this layer too. A little bit better. Just put a mask on it, go through it. 100%. Okay. Now we tried to get this under control a little bit more of the sky. But you see, once there's a, a thing a lot of old painters and photographers used to say, you never want the sun to look like a blob of white. And that's what this looks like. It's lost its shape. It's, it's yeah. just a blob of white. So the sun's got to go. You know, you, 
oh, wait a minute. We can eliminate the sun from the image and do a square crop. Okay, now you've saved your image somewhat. That's the only way you can keep this image. Otherwise, you've got to go back there, wait for the sun to either set or be behind clouds and use this image and get this shot. This isn't quite as yeah, bad. Yeah, that is better. Yeah. It's better. I've eliminated that horrible, bright, that, that blob. And, of course, your eye is drawn right to it because it's a blob of white. Right. So, well, you have to go with this. You cannot go with this. This is this is too much. Oh, my God. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is much better. We like this. It's actually better. So now you know what to do. You know to get a grad on there or wait till the sun's dropping below the horizon. So you're really going to think of it, you know, this whole process is like, you know, just process. like being a painter. You, it is. You've got to Absolutely. go in and change everything till it looks just, you know. Until it looks right. It's we don't like have to have reality. We have to have what's going to look good, right? What's going to look good? What's going to look like reality? Mm -hmm. What's going to look like what we thought we saw? Right. Even if it isn't quite what we thought we saw. The sky just needs to be darkened a little. It's blown. It's, all right. First of all, let's look at the original. Here it is. This is actually a very pretty composition, and the sky is very beautiful, but you're killed by this. You know, it's just without a graduated neutral density filter, it's just, it's just killed. If I can lower the brightness. And what happened is, you see what's happened? The reds got overexposed. Can you see the red channel here? Yeah. When you blow your red channel, you can never bring it back. So that red channel is gone. Even in this, it just seems weird in this. Well, look at the histogram. So once you've blown, look at your histogram on your camera. When you took this picture, you had to look at the, look at the RGB, all three colors, and you'll see this. When you see that, you know you've got to lower this. You've got to do something to darken the sky. And the only thing you can do is put a grad on there. So this is the only way I can do it. But you see, I can't save this. Nothing mm -hmm. can save that. It's blown. So, you know, I, I can't save it, but it looks a little bit better. So you have to go there again. The, the foreground looks better. That looks better with this. This is what we had. This is what we've got now, and that's better. But this can't be saved because of the exposure. It's overexposed. So you go back there. You put a graduated on this upper half. So it's going to... This is a, a fake graduated. This is in, in here. But you're, a grad is going to pull this down like that, and it's going to keep darkening it. And it will look like that in your camera, and that's what you want. Oh, maybe I can bring it back with this. Okay, this has gotten rid of the red blown up there. So now you've got this somewhat back under control. Let me just do a level. So this a would you brighten the foreground again, or would you leave it that I don't know. Dark? I'm just thinking it may be a little... I don't know. Let me, Let me look at this again. Take out the levels. The level. Okay, the levels brings it back. Give me this. Give me a grad. Uh, let me paint through it. We'll see how we like it. Too bright. I think it's too bright. Mm -hmm. It doesn't match the sky. It's too bright for the sky. We can we can lower that brightness. You know, I can bring it back, but not as much. I can bring it back like thirty percent. Okay, that's better. Yeah. That's only 30% instead of 80%. So that looks better. Here's the original. Here's afterward. It's really, it looks a lot better. I love the sky. The sky's beautiful. But I, by, by putting a grad on it, I think if this person has Lightroom, whoever did this, you can maybe bring it in light, down in Lightroom. See, I can't do this in Camera Raw, and I can't get these to open in my Lightroom. I don't know why. But I think this looks pretty darn good. Let me just get it. Just one more thing. Let me just do a total, total contrast. Nick, the Nick Color Effects Pro is very good for total contrast. It's got a lot of crazy stuff, but if you want to do total contrast, it can usually do a nice job. Oh, with that, you won't see it until I whoops, bring that up. See how that looks. Oh, wow. I like it. We we'll just have to lower it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this adds a little more dimension to it. Here it is. It adds more dimension. It brings in the sky so you're not looking out of the image. Here the sky is kind of light. Your eye kind of follows these diagonals out. But here, 
It adds as a vignette and keeps your eye in it. The only problem is this is still kind of blown down there, but it's not bad. It's not bad. What do you think, Gary? That's not bad, huh? Yeah, I think it looks good. I think it looks much better than the beginning, and here's we're back to the beginning. Woo! Okay, so this is a problem with exposure, overexposure, and needing needing a grad. So that can be corrected. I like this one. This is an interesting image. Okay, D. Santos photography. <laughs> the name is on there. All right, let's see. I like it. I don't have anything really critical to say. I like that it's a fire in this light bulb and it's broken and it's it's red. I don't know, Gary, what do you think? I like it. I, I don't know. What, I See, it's not my, my thing because I'm landscape photography, but as it is, I like it. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with it. I, I like it a lot it. too. Yeah, me too. I really do. I, the only thing maybe a little bit of, just to give it a little more dimension, maybe, nope, not burn. I was just thinking if I could maybe saturate the top a little bit. Just to give it the top of the light bulb a little more dimension. That's about all I would do. That's better. Give it a little more color and dimension up at the top. Let me see. Before, after. Yeah, that gives it a little more life and it looks more lit. Yep. So within. You added I'm a little lighted. saturation for that? Yes, a little saturation. All I did was you use the sponge tool. Put it on saturate and only 20 percent and it makes a lot of difference it'll add a little more punch see the punch it adds to it? yeah definitely I really like it and you can even saturate you know the smoke and then it from dull to a little more saturated i like it okay nice image really nice image and it's what i like is it's very original very yeah. unusual i know what this is this is at scarborough And first thing I would do with this is level the horizon. You see that it's a little bit, is that, if that's the ocean in the background I'm looking at, does it look off to you, Gary? It looks it's, like the horizon's not level. Oh, the grass looks level? Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. What I will do is we, we take the transform tool and I'll just warp it. And that way, if it isn't, it will bring this part down on the side in case it's just the, way, the effect of the thing here. Right there. Right there. That looks better to me. All right. Before, after. See how it was lifting up there? Yeah. Now it's not lifted. It gave me the effect of being lifted. This is obviously at night. Yes. That must be the moon. I like this building. I'll tell you something. You take, I, I, I do like it. It's dramatic. And it looks like it was light painted, which I like. It's light painting is neat. Um, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, you want to do a little bit of skewing with this? Hmm, that's interesting. It's interesting. Now watch. Here's this, where it looks like it's falling backward and pushing backward. Now it's leaning a little bit more forward. It's kind of cool. Prop it right here. Okay, now here's this. See, I don't care for the shape of it. Is, do you, does that make sense? Yeah. The building looks too distorted. Here it looks like you're standing here and the door looks normal normal instead of falling backward and distorted. And you just correct that with the transform tool. You're just correcting your perspective. I really like this. This is cool. There's a lot of black here. And that's usually not a good thing. But, you know, there's a clone tool right up here. <laughs> you, see, you just grab these guys, put a couple down here. Hey, these guys got the light. Okay, uh -huh. that adds a little bit to, you, to your foreground. Get a couple of these. Come right over here. Here. Yeah. There. A couple there. Okay, so this adds a little bit of interest here. Blacked out, black out a couple. Cool. Don't let, them, don't let anybody know they're cloned. So you move things around. Okay, so this adds a little more dimension to the front. I'm really liking it. Now I'm going to crop the front a little bit. Okay, this looks pretty good. Do you think there's too much there, Gary? I don't want to take away the moon, though. I like it. Yeah, I think that looks great. I mean, it, it improved it. It looks good to me. It, it's improved. Let's see. Okay, now here's original. And here's this. Oh, yeah. Definitely improved. 
So you take, now here, it's easy. You click on edit, transform, just like I said, transfer. And you can do a lot. You don't have to do that. Go back to this. And you use this selection tool right here. You select it. Because you can see it's falling backwards. Yep. And you can use edit, transform, and this perspective, which will do basically the same thing. But I personally like the skew tool because the perspective, look, it's out of the image. Yep. So you're better off to use the skew tool, which corrects it better. What you do is you practice with different ones. Because see, there's the other one sucks. There's this one, this one, this one. This one's the best. Okay, mm. So we like this one, right? We don't like this one, but we love this one. We love a little bit of grasses in the foreground. Yeah, so I like the little the light grasses. spots. Yeah, yeah, a few light spots. Just keep your eye in there. Otherwise, you're like, oh, it's all this black. Don't forget, bright and dark, draw your eye. So you're like, what's all this black? Yeah. What's going on in there? But the black behind it doesn't bother me. Not at all. My problem is I would probably never think of doing these things. <laughs> oh, you, everything. You cannot believe what I would do. To get, it's an, to me, our images are our art. You do what you have to do to, to create your art. Mm -hmm. And if the person who did that doesn't like this, then don't do it. If that's the way you want it, you want the building like this, lean it back, then you do it. But you want to improve your art. So this, to me, improves your art. It looks yeah, I like natural. it. See, that's the thing. Remember that I used to paint all the time. So I kind of look at it more like a painter photographer than just a photographer. And this I kind of like. Except I think there's too much going on. I don't know what this is. It looks like a place you might sit. And I don't know what the fence is around it. And there's a bunch of dead trees here. There's like a little thing, bridge leading out, a bunch of rocks and a path. To me, this is an image I'm kind of confused by. I, I, I think there's like too much. I think maybe right. if you got really close... I'm just still not sure what I'm looking at. And that's a bad thing for, for the public to look at and not know. I think it's like, I thought it was a picnic area, but it's not. It's a bridge. I think it's a bridge, isn't it? Yeah, like you said, it's hard See, to tell. It's like it's, it's hard. And when you can't identify what you're looking at, that can be confusing. The lighting is interesting, but I'm too confused. You know, what do you, if I were me and I'd say, okay, what does this guy want me to see? Must be wanting me to see this building, but I don't know what it is. And I don't know what this fence is for. And there's some kind of guys carved on this fence out of metal, but I don't know what they're all about. And what's this thing leading here? So in this case, it's confusion. So you've right. got to decide. Do you want to show, show me the bridge? Do you want to show me the carvings on this fence? Then get in real close and just show me the fence. If you want to show me this building, go around the other side. Just show me this building. If you want to show me these mountains in this building, go around the other side. Show me the mountains. Don't show me all of this at once because I don't know what it is. And I'm confused. And you don't right. want the public confused. So that one you gotta redo. You gotta redo it. Okay, any others? No. Good. We hit the last that one. Was fun. I think so. That great was job. Yeah, a lot of images there, and you did a great job going through them. And fun. you had some amazing suggestions that things that but I yeah, wouldn't have even thought of. Already, people don't often think of, you know, it's just it's not just the photographer's eyes. Remember, it's a painter's eye. Right. And you've got to look at your work like art. It is art. Photography is art. Let's look at this one quickly. Is this one really, I really like this foreground because you see how it curves and leads you in? Yep. This is a fish eye. I'd never take from a fish eye. I'd never stop it from being one. It would be ruined. This is like, I have a picture of Cape Kawanda that's very similar where a rock wall is leading you in. It's a rock cliff. And, and you got to keep this. The only thing I do, Gary, is did you have a grad on here? Uh, no, I didn't. Try to hold one. I hold one. You can't put one on it. You know how wide the fisheye is. Yep. You can't hold one. Just put hold one in front of it. And just hold it there for a second. Because see how this, the sun is really blown there. Yeah. But I'll tell you, it's a cool shot anyway. I really like it. Give me this little grad for one minute. There's nothing you can do. No, that sun is gone. But it's a great shot. Could but you clone think, the... Can you do it in Lightroom? Can you lower this in Lightroom? Yeah, I could probably bring some back, yeah. Bring some back in Lightroom. But see, uh, this has got that fatal flaw. And, the, and if you talk to any really 
well-known photographer, anybody who's published, this is a fatal flaw. When okay. the sun is blown out and you cannot identify it any longer, it's considered a fatal flaw in an image. So try to eliminate something like that. I'll tell you what I... You so I should have waited till the sun again was below the was horizon? Below the horizon or right on the horizon. Yeah. Just go and just get the sunspot, get the sky, get the golden color. I have an image that's very much like this that I took in Beaver Tail, but it's got the sun below the horizon, right on the horizon. Wait a minute, let me just get out of this for one minute and see if I can find it. It's right here somewhere. Let's see if I've got that fisheye one because it's the same type image only it's a fisheye crap yes i know where it is okay you're gonna have to stay with me for one more second okay i know where it is because i want you to see it so you'll know what to do and what island and where's the here it is okay in this image gary you see what I did? I waited until the sun was right on the horizon. So it didn't blow out my image. It's barely visible. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And you see, I've got the color in the sky. I've even got these birds, but that's my fisheye at beaver tail. And just, you've got to wait until it's right there at the very end, just before it goes. And that way you don't get that big blob of white up here. You get the golden color. True. Yeah, much better. So it's better. It's actually better. And you can do that with just show one other, one other picture with the fish eye since we're on fish eye. Where is Rockies in February? Show you another example of a fish eye. Here's another fish eye. And this is what you do with them. Sun, wait until it dropped below. No, this was sunrise. Wait, kept the sun out of the picture. You see the sun's coming up here? Yep. You can see a little light. It had just cleared the horizon, didn't want it in the picture, kept it out, so it lit the mountains, lit the guy over there, lit my foreground, but it's out of the picture. So it's either going to be out or right on the horizon. Okay? Yeah, great tip, yeah. Okay, stop sharing. Get him back. Here he is. <laughs> okay. Well, great job, Marion. Thank okay. you for all of your critiques. Oh, you're welcome. I know I learned a lot, and I'm sure the people watching learned a lot, things we probably wouldn't have thought of until you pointed them out. I know. I have tips that most people don't think of using, and they can help you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you take a look at the page with the chat window down below, I have a couple of courses coming up, and I have some special Cyber Monday deals. If you'd like to sign up for one of my courses, uh, you can join in more of these critique sessions and uh, hopefully maybe someday we'll get Marion back to, to do some more. <laughs> and uh, so again, I want to thank Marion for all your hard work tonight. And um, uh, is fun. there anything else we, you wanted to say before we uh, end this session? Well, I enjoyed it. It was fun. I just wish I could have opened them in, in camera raw. I wish there was a way to get raw. Can people send raw images or do people not do raw images? Yeah, um, some people do shoot in JPEGs, but um, now that I'm using the Dropbox folder, um, next time well, I'll request the images to be in RAW so that... Yeah, if they could send like their edited yeah. one and the RAW image so that if the edited one can't be fixed, you could probably, maybe I could, fix, you know, you could even fix it in RAW. Right, it gives us more, more control, RAW. yeah. Exactly. Great. Okay. All right, I think we'll end it there. And okay. again, thank you to Marion, and I hope you had some fun looking at our images. And <laughs> that was fun, Gary. All right, great. All right, good then. Night. We'll say good night. Bye bye. Good night, everybody. <laughs>